Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Astros Post Game Show. We're at Minute Maid Park. We're obviously on tape, but there's going to be no shortage of information for you here on the show, especially if you're a draft, Nick. Paul Ricciarini, who's in charge of the Astros draft, is going to be with us talking about all the kids in the draft, and especially one kid, Max Sapp, the catcher out of Florida. He was here taking batting practice. We will talk to him. You're going to really like this kid. You're going to like another kid, too. He is a kid who came a long way to meet Roger Clemens, don't you go anywhere. This is a special story. But we're going to start with Chris Burke, a kid who has come a long way as well in this Astros organization, a kid with nowhere to play. But Phil Garner just can't keep him out of the lineup anymore. <laughs> Most any other team, Chris Burke would have been an everyday player a while ago. But with Craig Biggio firmly planted at second base and not going anywhere soon, it took a while for Phil Garner to find a spot for Chris. Playing regularly now has its rewards offensively for Burke. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely a, a little bit less of a sense of urgency uh, with each game when you feel like you know that you're going to be in there, so you don't have to put quite as much on every at bat and. Uh, you, you, at least I've been able to find myself in more of a rhythm um, from the standpoint of just at bat after a bat after bat and really getting comfortable with, with what I'm trying to do up there. But to get that regular playing time, Chris had to give up his natural position and play the outfield. Last year it was left. This year, for the most part, it's been center. Playing out of position has become an old hat for Chris. Uh, well, I got, a, I got used to that a lot last year, you know, playing left field. So... Um, I just try to do the best I can when I'm putting a, a spot on defense that I don't have that much experience with and um, just try to concentrate on making the plays I'm supposed to make, try not to do anything um, uh, out of the realm of my, my capabilities, just try to hit the cutoff man and catch the balls I know I can catch and then um, try to bring to the table what I can do on offense. But just because he's getting most of his PT in left and now center, he's still not giving up his dream to one day be the Astros' second baseman. No, 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 I mean, I still consider myself an infielder. I don't know yeah. what it would take for me to change that internal opinion of myself, but uh, at least at least to myself, I still consider myself an infielder. Two years of big league ball in the outfield, maybe. I <laughs> uh, no, I don't really know what to call myself. I'm a baseball player, I guess, is about <laughs> the only, only thing I can say. He is going to be a heck of a player for years to come here for the Houston Astros. We're going to take a break. Don't you go anywhere. When we come back, we're going to meet Paul Ricciarini. He's in charge of the Astros draft. We're talking all things draft next on the Astros postgame show here on TV 51. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Astros post game show. This was a special day here at Minute Maid Park for more than a few reasons, but especially for Matt Vasapka. He's a make a wish kid that wanted to meet Roger Clemens and meet Roger Clemens. He did. Matt Vasapka lived a dream last Wednesday night at Minute Maid Park, not expected to recover from bone marrow transplant last year. Make a wish asked him what one thing he wanted to do most in life. The answer was to meet Roger Clemens, which surprised everybody, even his family. We didn't know that ourselves. Mom and Dad had no idea. You know, when he was asked what he wanted to do, anything he wanted, he come out right away, said Roger, you know. And it's we didn't ask why or anything like that, didn't try and uh, convince him to do anything else. It was Roger, and that was it. And that was back in September, you know, and we had no idea all this was going to happen or anything like that. But just what a thrill it's got to be for him, you know. Matt got his money's worth from the Rocket, not only hanging out with the players, but touring the facility and even getting a pitching lesson from one of the all-time greats. So uh, he spent a lot of time with you. Can you believe it that you got to spend that much time getting the instruction and everything from Roger Clemens? No, I can't believe it. I was only ex They told me only expect about like five minutes, maybe a handshake and a couple autographs. And here he is working with your... So, so you a better pitcher now? Yeah. <laughs> what did he teach you? Just I gotta keep square to the plate and don't let my shoulder fly open. You taking it back to Minnesota and using it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Matt could have used that lesson last April. His other dream was to pitch for his high school team, which he did four months ahead of schedule. Hopefully he'll be keeping that shoulder tucked for a long time. One thing's for sure, he'll never forget who taught him. Wow, what a story and what a guy Roger Clemens is to put all that time in 
with that young man. All right, we are out of time here tonight on the Astros Post Game Show. We're glad you could join us. We are going to be back again in three weeks here on TV 51, July 23rd against the New York Mets. Make sure that you watch afterwards for the Astros Post Game Show. Until then, so long, everybody. But first, let's throw it back to Bill and Jim to wrap things up and send you home. Guys?